Hey friends, let's talk about signals. A while back I made a video that talked about how we can use Fork to create multiple processes. Today I want to look at how we can interact with those processes. During that video I mentioned that you can kill processes. Today I want to expand on that because killing is a pretty limited type of interaction. So signals are one of the simplest ways that you can interact with a process on Mac OS, Linux, or any Unix style operating system. Windows, of course, does their own thing. If you've been programming in Linux, Mac OS, or a Unix style operating system, you've probably used signals, you may not be aware of it. When you ask, well, every time you ever hit Control C to terminate a program. So let's look at an example. Let's say I have a program that never terminates. It just runs forever. Now, most student programs that act like this are written by accident. This one is intentional for illustrative purposes. And when you run a program like this, you naturally enjoy its cute repetition for a while, and then you hit Control-C to kill it. And maybe you didn't realize it, but right then you send a signal to the process. It's the sig int signal, which by default interrupts the process and tells it to end. Mm, not that interesting, but we can change things up a bit. So let's, let's just play with this a little bit. And let's say that I wanna do things differently when Control-C is pressed. Okay, so I can add a function that will be called whenever a particular signal is received, and I'm going to use the signal function to register that function. So here, I'm just saying that I want my handler function to run whenever a sig int signal is received. And now when I run it and I press Control C, well, yeah, now, now we're definitely in the running for the most obnoxious C program ever written. Seriously, at this point, what do I do? I have a program that won't die. Fortunately, there are other signals that I can send. Notice that I have my program print out its process ID. That's just for convenience and it's to make this next part a little easier. Now let's show that process we mean business. Let's send the sig term signal. Now sig term sternly tells the process to go terminate itself. And of course I haven't told you yet how to send signals other than sig int. And you do that with the kill command, which is really poorly named and not nearly as violent as it sounds. At least not always. Yeah, sometimes it kills processes, but sometimes it doesn't. It just sends messages. I can call kill from within a program, but I can also do it from the command line just like this. So I tell it what signal I want it to send and the process ID and hey, look, we got it. We killed the process. Of course, nothing stops my more obnoxious alter ego from just handling sig term as well. So we can add a handler for that and basically, uh, now um, we're handling sig term. So at this point, things aren't looking too good. Fortunately, there's still sig kill. You'll sometimes hear people talk about kill-9, so that's the same thing. Let's try it out. Haha, <laughs> take that process. How does the heavy hand of justice feel now, buddy? And I may try to keep the arms race going and handle sig kill, but fortunately it's not gonna work. I can't handle sig kill. Sig kill is simply an order, not a request. Now signals do more than just kill processes. They can also stop processes. They can also continue processes. You can send user-defined signals, which then is just a communication. It, it means whatever you want it to mean. And oddly enough, programs even receive a signal when they segfault. True story. So let's try that one out really quickly. If I make a pointer, let's set it to null, and then I'm gonna try to dereference it. This should definitely segfault, and it does. And now let's add a handler. And there you have it. We've just handled a segfault, well, sort of. You see, what we really did was we just made a mess. I handled the segfault signal, but it didn't fix the situation. It didn't fix the bad pointer. And so after I handle it, it's simply just going to try the bad memory access again. And we get stuck in an endless loop. And now I've got to hunt down the PID and kill it from the terminal. And for the record, do not fix segfaults this way. I'm just showing you how signals work and that there actually are signals that are sent during a segfault, but it's far better just to check your pointers. Okay, so that's fine, but why would I ever need this? Other than killing processes, I might want to use the user-defined signals to just let a process know that something's happened. If I have two processes that are working together, one could just signal the other and say, hey, that thing that I was going to do for you, I just did it. Another common use case is you want to handle signals when something bad happens, when you're being killed, when someone gets when someone hits control C or kill dash nine or whatever, you may want to have the opportunity to close file handles, to free up some memory, to make sure that things are in a consistent state before your program actually terminates. And you're not gonna use this all the time, but let's face it, sometimes the default control C behavior just isn't enough. Sometimes you need to fail gracefully. So finally, I wanna mention a few more things. The first thing is that I use signal in my example because it's simple, but it turns out there's actually a newer function called sig action that is preferred over signal. And this is because it gives you more options, it gives you more information, it just gives you more control over the process of how you handle signals. And so if you use sig action, your code is gonna be more portable and so that's recommended. And this is what my original code would look like if I was using sig action. Second, you'll notice that in my signal handlers, I used write instead of printf. And there's a reason for that. Signal handlers run asynchronously. That means that they can interrupt your code at any point. And so you can't just run any code in a signal handler. 
In the standard library, some functions are listed as async signal safe. Now this simply means that they are safe to run in a signal handler. It means that they can run asynchronously with other code. There are a lot of functions on this list, but printf is not on this list. But write is, and so I use that instead, since that's actually what printf uses. It's a little clunkier, but it's safe. And that doesn't mean that printf will always crash if I use it in a signal handler. It just means that printf might crash or it might cause problems. It's just not always going to be safe to do this. And nobody likes programs that crash randomly for no apparent reason. And that's what I have for you today. Signals. You probably won't use them in every project. You probably won't use them every day. But now you'll have them when you need them. I hope this helps a future project. And until next time, I'll see you later.